it's John here again. Just gonna have a quick look at some of the best new features that I have found on the Oreo beta update for the Galaxy S8. First up, I'm just gonna compare the boot time between Android Nougat and Android Oreo. Now, as you can see, the boot time is about three or four seconds quicker on Oreo compared to Nougat. Now the wording from Google was it was a booting about twice as quick. So it has obviously been bogged down with some apps and other things, but uh, it certainly wasn't twice as quick. Needless to say, it was definitely quicker, so that's, uh, that's a good point. So let's take a look at the new app icon badges. If you go into your settings and then notifications, you'll see icon badges listed at the top. Click on here and you then get a choice to either don't show, show with number, or show without a number. Now, obviously iPhone users are used to this kind of interference on their icons. Android users, not so much. So, let me just turn that off. Yeah, this is a personal preference really. I'd rather not have numbers on my icons, or none at all to be honest. Uh, I'm gonna just stick without numbers because, you know, I'm all up for trying new things. So let's see how it will look without the numbers on. Now, if you go into the advanced notification settings, you'll see you can actually turn on and off app icon badges for individual apps. Now, this is quite useful, I'm going to find for things like WhatsApp. So rather than receiving dots, numbers, however you want to put your app icon badges, you can just turn it off like that. So that's quite a good feature. Next up, we're going to look at the Edge panel. This was in the Nougat version of Android for the Samsung Galaxy S8, but there has been some new improvements. So go into your settings, click on display, scroll down until you see Edge screen. Slide across to turn it on, and here you can see the Edge panel has been activated. So the new feature here is that the edge panel can actually be moved up and down the side of the screen, as you can see. Now this is good for if you're using a phone with one hand, you don't have to stretch your thumb up. And it's also good if you're left-handed, as you can see, you can now move it across to the other side of the screen, which is extremely useful. Whether people use this much, I don't know. I did use it a bit for taking notes quickly and checking the weather, but I found most of the time it just kind of looked a bit ugly, sat there, ruining my screen. Next up is the edge lighting, which I know you've all been waiting for. So, notifications, the edge of the screen will light up as per normal, but now you actually have some more advanced features that you can customise. So let's have a look. If you go into effects, you can select your different effects. So as you can see, you can now customize the width of the edge lighting as well, which is useful because sometimes you don't even notice the edge lighting going off because it's so thin.
There are also some more advanced color features here. So you can select from the picker here exactly what color you'd like. set the brightness setting the colors for individual apps is still the same you can obviously quickly select some of your previous colors that you've chosen or we'll select again from the picker The transparency option allows you to show how see-through the edge lighting will become as it goes off. Low for no transparency and high for high transparency, obviously. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is called Dual Messenger. Now this is a useful idea for people who have multiple accounts. So for example here you can see WhatsApp and Skype. You can enable the dual messenger on an app and it installs a second version of the app which you can use to sign in with a separate account. So perhaps you've got a work Skype account along with your personal Skype account and you don't want to keep signing in and out of each one. Here you can see that's my personal one and the new one I've created which would, could potentially be for my work account has got the little dual messenger icon on it. If we load it up you'll see it will ask me to sign in. This feature can be disabled and the dual messenger app will be removed. Next up I want to show you the new settings in the video player which allow you to control the speed and repeat of a video. Go into the settings and enable the playback speed option here. Once enabled when a video is playing you will see a little icon at the bottom. Press on here and you can then drag the play speed to become either half speed or twice speed. The next handy feature I want to show you is in the voice recorder app. If you go into the settings you now have the option to reject incoming calls while you're actually recording. So rather than being interrupted and the recording stopping, you can tell that person you're not interested and block them. And now we come to probably the most advanced feature on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Oreo Beta Edition, which is in the clock app. If you turn your phone sideways, you will now notice that the clock app supports the horizontal view. It has taken years and years for Samsung to invest in this kind of technology and it's great to see it in Android Oreo. I'd just like to send out a personal thank you to Samsung, all your technicians for the hard work, the programming and effort that has gone into this new clock app. It is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Let's have a quick look at the new emojis. So if you use the Samsung keyboard, you'll get access to all these new emojis. They've all got different colors and types to keep everyone happy. They've also now introduced GIFs. 
Now this is nothing particularly new, you could always add GIFs into messages, but they've made it slightly easier to access directly from the keyboard. So select a GIF, you can search for different keywords and put a GIF into your message. This will convert your message into an MMS if you're sending it via a text message or if you send it via WhatsApp or any other free messaging service, it will obviously be free. You can add multiple GIFs into a message and you can also remove any that you don't want afterwards. Now the next thing I want to show you is the new settings and features in the camera app. If we just bring over something to take a photo of, you'll now see in the bottom left, just above the switch camera, is the full view mode. Now some people have said this just fills the screen on the phone, other people have said other things which I don't even know. But what I seem to have found is that taking a full view photo doesn't actually mean you're just filling the screen up, it's actually a different photo. If we use this as an example, here's a normal photo and here's the full view photo. So if we look back at these photos now, you'll see they are cropped slightly differently. So it's not just filling the screen up, it's actually almost like it's zooming in slightly to the picture to stretch it out. Definitely two different photos. I didn't move when I took them. So not quite sure what the advantage is. I guess you can probably get more in the photo, possibly in the full view mode. Not sure, but the feature is there anyway for you to play with. So as I can see, the settings look the same. I don't remember shape correction, but I haven't ever used it, so that could be why. There is a new option to add an additional button to the screen to take photos on. Here we are, floating camera button. So once that's enabled, you get a floating camera button. You can drag and drop this wherever you like on the screen and take photos with your new button. So this could be handy if your phone is in a mount of some form or for whatever reason you just want to take photos with your other hand, maybe you're left handed and you don't want to switch the phone around in your hand. Next we'll take a quick look at Bixby Vision. My initial thoughts on this are that it hasn't really changed a huge amount that I can see, but we'll give it a test anyway and see how it gets on. So let's have a look at the Stay Puffed Man here. If we get Bixby to take a snapshot, yeah, okay, so there's no shopping results. How about images? Can it detect what is here? Well, I must admit, it's chosen fat and hideously looking objects, so I think it's done quite good there. I mean, that isn't a bad resemblance of what we've got on the magazine there. His arms are sticking out, his face is, is like that, so yeah, that's not too bad. He's pulling these images from Pinterest. Okay, let's try another one. Got to hold the phone a few seconds longer for it to actually register that you want to use that. See what it finds from this image. Well, again, although not the Playmobil image that we can see, it has detected that there's two sort of fairy tale characters there. No shopping results. Let's do a text check here on the Playmobil logo. Select text. It will now tell us to 
select the area around the text to help it identify where the text actually is. Give it a good chance there. And it didn't quite get it, it got play mob, so it's missed out the I and the L, possibly because the I's dot is a bit of a funny, uh, funny shape. Let's have a look at some of the Bixby effects. Again, these were here previously in the Nougat version. I'm impressed it's actually picked up the Marshmallow Man as a face, considering it is actually a marshmallow, but for this purpose and this video it's actually quite useful. So overall, Oreo seems to be behaving well so far, this beta version. There are a few nice new features which are nice to have, but it's not really something to write home about, so I wouldn't worry too much if you've got to wait a few months to get it. So what are your thoughts on these new features? Are there any more that you'd like to see? Are these app icon badges going to get annoying? Well, that's all for now. I will see you again in the next video.